we're going to go ahead and get started. 2.47 and we are on military time, so we want to get going right away. Um, thank you so much. It's been a great week. Especially I want to acknowledge our WASP accreditation team um, committee members for their time and for visiting all of the classrooms. Would you please join me in giving them a round of applause? Phenomenal. As you know, he was out here on uh, November 9th. He's read the document in advance, given us great feedback. And so would you please also welcome him up, uh, Dr. Greg Hubbard. Thank you very much. I also want to say a word of acknowledgement to the team. We got back to the hotel about 7.30 last night after a long day. Then they had homework to do, assigned by me. And the homework was due at 7 o'clock this morning when we arrived. And I've been pushing and pushing and pushing them all day long because of all the documents we had to produce at the last minute in this process. So I really want to thank their devotion and their steadfastness and their sticking to the task and getting it done and being able to walk out of here pretty much free of clear of other responsibilities when they leave today. So thank you very much, team, for your very work. I also want to thank Orange Lutheran for its warm hospitality and the devotion that you showed in producing this self-study. Your students are phenomenal, open, frank, honest, and at the same time, we could tell that they were individuals of character, that they were men and women that are being formed for others. Your faculty, we were solidly impressed with quality of instruction that we saw in the classroom, with the preparation, with the caring, the caring for the whole person that we saw in the classroom, and their hard work to making this all come to fruition. The staff, the support staff, the, the other staff that works about the facility, they were so helpful, so warm and open to any requests that we had and worked hard to fulfill them. Your administrative team, all the preparation and planning and scheduling that they put into this event for us to be here for the last three and a half days. Our meeting with the board on Sunday evening was really delightful. We could see that they had really carried within them the larger vision of what this place can be and that they're pursuing that vision with all of the abilities that they bring to that board. And lastly, your parents. We were impressed with their participation in this community, with the fact that they have entrusted their students to you each day to care for them, and that the, tr the abiding trust that they have in you as a school. So all of those things impressed us very much. Focus on Learning asks two basic questions. How do you know all students are achieving based on school-wide school student goals and academic standards? And is the school doing everything possible to support high achievement for all students? To answer that question, the task is divided into four areas that we examine primarily. Organization for student learning, curriculum instruction and assessment, support, student support, and the management of resources and the gathering of resources. So at this time, I'm going to ask the individuals who worked on the section of the report, Organization for Student Learning, to come forward and tell us, summarize their findings for their section of the report. I'm Ryan Gruen, I'm superintendent of Ontario Christian Schools. This is a first uh, WASP visit for me, and uh, you know, thank again uh, Dr. Hepburn for uh, all of his work in advance getting this all together. And, and just a real uh, thank you to all of you. It's very clear that uh, God's hand of blessing is upon this place. I was reflecting with one of your administrators. It's also very clear, by the way, that uh, there's a lot of hardworking, dedicated, and uh, really high achieving people who are on the faculty and staff of Orange Lutheran. And, but as I was reflecting with one of your administrators, it's very clear that even if you did everything right, even if you had all the best people in place, 
who all worked very, very hard. If God withdrew his hand of blessing, it would all still fall apart. And so it's just clear that both of those things are in place, that you have wonderful people and God is really blessing your work. And that just came through over and over again. And specifically, um, as we looked at our area, Organization for Learning starts off with school purpose, mission, core values, and so on. And one of the questions we asked was about the purpose statement, which I, I really appreciate how, how clear and succinct that is. And, and we asked uh, the board, we asked parents, we asked faculty groups, we asked students about that, and it just came through over and over again. And we saw it ourselves in chapel, we saw it ourselves in, in the different things that were happening that uh, you really are living to that purpose and and, uh, and clearly God is, uh, is blessing that, as we said. I'll make a little footnote there. You know, I'm an educational researcher as a faculty member, and so I go into these meetings and I collect this little matrix and uh, from every single group, all your stakeholders, it, the reason that everybody's here is for Christian values, and that was very heartwarming. And Diana is a professor at Pepperdine. Well, I'll introduce you. Go ahead, keep going. Okay. I, just, I just had a I had to keep the logic going. Oh, you know, you know, the professor right. thinking. And so there's really a clear uh, alignment and consistency with the purpose and the mission, core values uh, connected to the Esslers. The Esslers are also you know, clear and easy to remember, and those connect well throughout everything we saw here. Okay. Uh, for those of you, I think I've had so many of you. I'm Dr. Diana Hyde Michael. I'm a professor of education at Pepperdine University. And the and I do hope many of your wonderful students, uh, you do encourage them to come to Pepperdine. This is the kind of student we want to have. <laughs> and so I will, I will note, I will pat, pat, probably send a note to Dr. Long, who's in charge of our admissions. You know, if they say Orange Lutheran, just tell them they have my recommendation. <laughs> talk as much to what's what's up there as I sort of wanted to make some comments uh, many of you probably many of you don't know I have been teaching curriculum and instruction for over 40 years and so I wanted to make some compliments that come from many many years of observing schools and you should be so proud of your school and I'm sure you are um, I was particularly impressed with the fact that you actually did adopt a usable blocks you know statement of 80 minute periods I saw such marvelous instruction taking place because of the 80 minute block. The teachers are using it very wisely, segmenting it up with both uh, frontline instruction, small group instruction, follow up quizzes, um, alternative means. I was very impressed with that. And the students kept complimenting and commenting on the, 20, the two large 20 minute breaks as an opportunity to kind of like debrief the last class and get ready for the first class and then give me all kinds of uh, serious reasons how they use that time. It's, it's very, actually, it's more instructive than you guys realize. <laughs> then walking through the building, um, I immediately noticed how there is such a connection and coordination of classrooms. You'd be surprised when you go through public schools how many times there's portables and you're trying to find where things are. And here, it was almost, I had probably don't feel that way, but there was almost a seamlessness. I mean, when I went to the English departments, it was that area. Drama was in an area. Uh, every, there was a way of teachers then just naturally connecting to each other, as well as in the, the, the school learning teams that happen on Wednesday morning. And of course, I was so impressed. I know I only went to two, two this morning, but of those, I was just duly impressed, and I'm sure they're multiplied uh, across the school. The other thing that highly impressed me was the coordination of things that some schools just consider extracurricular. And here it's not extracurricular, it's part of the, the student's curriculum. And that was sports, music, drama, mission, school leadership, and all those things were considered as part of the school life and part of the intended outcomes. Um, you know, we don't segment our, our natural adult life into part of, you know, partition, and you have allowed the students to be a full, a full-blown person. Uh, again, I can't, I can't help but emphasize the same things probably all of us said over and over again, was the care of each and every one of you for the academic excellence and encouraging each child to take their gifts and talents and live it in the glorification of God and living the life of Jesus Christ. Did I say that, Mary? Enough. We, have to, we, we got through. We said we didn't have Jesus enough in, in our, our statement. I said, well, we can't say it on every line. <laughs> And, and, 
And let's see, and then I just said, the last but not least, I just wanted to say that there, I, I was very impressed with both your vertical and, and horizontal connections of curriculum. And if you don't know what that means, you read chapter three of Dr. Ralph Tyler, Principles of Curriculum and Instruction. He was my mentor. And uh, with that, I think we're about ready to go. Did I cover everything? Okay, and then ready for the next one. All yeah. right. Yeah, I think, and these are just the uh, areas for focus. Oh, okay. And, yeah. yeah. Do you want to go read those? That was your Yeah, job. you can you can read them yourself. No. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we we took a lot of what we did came right out of your own self study because your team did such a good job of identifying things and we were able to verify those things and so these come right from things that you had identified and so we appreciate your work in, in those areas. And we actually felt you were you were tougher on yourselves than we probably would have been on you. All right, um, my section was about the curriculum instruction and assessment. Um, I'm Carol Smallwood, if I don't know, I know a lot of you, but um, I had four children go through the school and um, I know some of you from back then and I appreciate what you did for my children, but I also appreciate what I saw happening here and, and, and so do the kids. The, the kids love you, that's their first answer. And this part, of course, has a lot to do with you because without you, the learning doesn't happen. And so these are the things that we brought forward to talk about, to celebrate. Um, the programs that you have in place that enable you to be better teachers, that focus on how you're doing your job, that make you such wonderful professional educators. So you have the learning teams that are in place, uh, the faculty induction program. I like the phrase that said, took, took teachers from surviving to, to being educators who accomplish great things. Um, the Global Assessment Development and Analysis Program. All these letters. <laughs> when I first read your book, I was like, oh, I don't know what this is. Uh, and then you have the training that you did in the assessments, the Classroom Assessment Development Use Program. Um, the fact that your administration and your school, your board support you um, to have professional development and to support you as you continue your education to become better and to stay current with all the new things that are happening in education. And the fact that you look ahead to help those kids who really want to achieve that STEM program that you've put into place. So those are just amazing excellence in teaching and learning. And the fact that you focus on learning instead of teaching is great. All right, and areas of focus, again, these are areas that you brought up um, the one is the curriculum scope and course articulation, um, documenting the existing scope and articulation of course content, patterns of alignment, variation existing between course elements for each teacher and across teachers. You started and got some more work to do in that area. The classroom space is the building program that's coming up to help get all the kids in the classes they want to be in. Um, putting your online program into the regular assessment program so that they can learn also, those educators can learn about assessments and be part of that professional development program. And there was a part about gathering student feedback, and there was a couple areas, like do they understand what your learning goals are for them, what the standards are for their learning, and also letting them have a say and telling you about the feedback, about how they feel about what they're learning and about how they're instructed, so that being part of their performance. up there and going green because <laughs> I hide behind podiums. I'm for student support and for personnel and uh, academic growth and the areas to celebrate was the mission program at the heart of the school's purpose and response through service to others and I wanted to put response to Jesus Christ's salvation as service to others. The IGNITE program, the opportunity to explore interests and cultivate passions by connecting to the resources and activities. A variety of sport ser uh, support services are available for at-risk students. The faculty and the staff has genuine care for their students. The counseling and college planning and the special, uh, special program support 
um, they lear to learning was in response to the expressed and assessed needs of the students. And the area to focus on, the regular evaluation of student involvement in curriculum and co-curricular activities and the use of support services, to improve the follow-up with students after, rehearsal to, uh, after referral to outside counseling services, to increase support for students performed in the middle range from the 2.5 to the 3.5 area, and to increase counseling contact with sophomore students. Hello, I'm Walt Lionel-Weaver, and I'm the head of middle school at St. Mary's School in uh, nearby Aliso Viejo. And uh, when a few months back, when I uh, received notice that Orange Lutheran was going to be my assignment for WASC, uh, I was thrilled. Um, I've been well aware of Orange Lutheran for going on 35 years, and I've uh, been from Southern California itself, and I've, I've been able to um, witness from afar sometimes, but not so far at other times, uh, your development over the years. And I've always been tremendously impressed with what I've seen. And this was my opportunity to get up close and with you for a few days. Um, I am struck in, in particular by the fact that there exists here a culture of improvement, of continual improvement. And that, I sense, is grounded in a commitment to excellence. Um, I felt that this week in interacting with you and your students. Uh, there was a sense I felt that this week was very important to you. And that's a great sign. You took this very, very seriously, this whole process. You care. I also sense that you perceived our visit this week as a challenge, or perhaps the culmination of a set of challenges you, you've had leading up to this week. And that in typical Lancer fashion, uh, you came at that with everything you had. So without any further ado, my area of focus was resource management and development, and areas to celebrate, and I think celebration is the absolutely correct term to describe all that you do here. Um, this is the short list of all that you do that is so good in the area of uh, resource management. You have been imaginative in utilizing the space you have. We sense that that is an ongoing challenge for you, but you are undaunted in your uh, creativity and your, your answer to your own questions of how we can continue to build and progress and move forward in the direction that you want to go. The financial oversight of Orange Lutheran is in superb hands. Uh, there is a professionalism to how you go about overseeing the financial operations of your institution. You have a tremendous team that day in, day out um, focuses on the safety and security of your school community. You are state of the art and you are aware of all things going on your campus at all seemingly all times, 24 hours a day, and you're proactive. And I sense that if I were to come back here three years from now, the security of your campus and your people would look a little different than it does today because, again, of your ongoing proactive approach to maintaining the safest environment you possibly can here at Orange Lutheran. Your marketing initiatives and admissions outreach are absolutely positive and absolutely authentic. 
I heard this a few times this week, that you make no apologies for who you are. And that's awesome. There is a strong sense of who you are in the broader community, well beyond your campus. I can say that as a resident of Orange County myself. Your professional hiring and professional growth systems and practices um, are excellent. They're well conceived. You are attracting high quality professional educators. And you are treating them with respect. And you are looking for opportunities to continue to support them. Support them day in, day out here within the workplace and also with their ongoing, never ending growth. Again, hearkening back to who you are as a community, you are a culture of continual improvement. And so this list of areas for focus um, in the days, weeks, months, and years after we leave this afternoon, uh, this is a list that you have generated yourselves. Uh, I don't think there's anything on this list that would surprise you, um, and no doubt, there isn't anything on this list that you cannot overcome and completely conquer, and I wish you well. Now you may think that is a lot of things to celebrate, and it is. There's, if you look at those items, there's probably 16 or 20 items that are celebrating. You should be patting yourself on the back and commending yourself for those things. Those are wonderful things that to, to have said about any school. At the same time, you may be thinking about that list that Walt was sharing of all the things to focus on. And how can we possibly focus on four or five items across four or five, four categories for a total of 16 to 20 items that you should focus on. Well, the WASP process that you've been going, going through doesn't ask you to try to do all 16 or 20 of those things. Instead, what the process now asks of you and asks of us as a team is to take all of those items and try to focus on what are the four or five that we think are most critical what are the four or five that will give you the most bang for your buck, if you will, in terms of your future for the next three to five years? So that was part of your self-study process, is to look at those items and make those decisions and develop an action plan. But before we do that, we wanted to celebrate the school-wide strengths. So if you look at school-wide strengths, there you can see them. There's the first set of strengths set up. We, we took those, actually those four areas and we cooked it down into what we thought were the really important things to celebrate that are school-wide, not limited to organization or curriculum or support services or resource management. And there that you see them. Your purpose statement just jumped out at us at number one. The collaboration and communication across the school the great support and care consistently demonstrated by the board, the learning teams that we were so impressed with this morning, and the commitment to professional development. In addition, your mission program, the passion that your students talk about, the mission program, we see it as really the heart of the school. The devotion and to the program and the improvement, the continuous improvement of counseling college planning and special services, the personalized approaches to learning, the imaginative utilization of spaces we just talked about and financial oversight. Now for our areas of focus. These you identified in your own self-study. Academic support for all students, curriculum scope and, seek and, scope and course articulation. These are all from your work 
facilities and infrastructure, funding the mission, and a written evangelism plan. Now, many times when a team visits, they will say, well, all of that's fine and good, but we think you should include this. We came to the conclusion that there is no this to be included, <laughs> that your action plan is exactly on target and where it needs to be, and we are recommending that the commission accepts your action plan as you designed it and as it stands. What happens next? Well, making it happen happens next. The next three to five years of working through that plan. So we did have some general advice for you as you go forward. Be targeted and precise and specific in developing metrics and gathering data and using it. Talk not only within your discipline, but across disciplines. Be aware that you're going to have changing needs, trends, and demographics over the life of the plan. That things may change demographically, or needs may change, or educational research may show you something else three years from now that you hadn't considered now. So as, this, as the school is rolling down the highway, you may have to change that plan of what direction that you're going. And then be sure and keep all of your stakeholders regularly informed and keep before them the importance of this action plan for the future of the school. So hopefully, as you work through this plan, you'll start to develop a vision of what you want for Orange Lutheran one year from now, two years from now, three years from now. And I'm sure that with the team, myself and the rest of the team, we will be anxiously following and thinking about and watching for news clippings in the newspaper of where Orange Lutheran is going. And we give, and we give thanks for the opportunity we had this week to share, that, to share with you our vision and for especially, we give thanks that you had the opportunity to share your vision with us, for we will take a piece of that back to the places where we work. Thank you very much. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you as we sit here. Um, many people in this room probably exhausted and, and uh, having breathing a sigh of relief. Uh, it's been a long process, it's been a long haul, but it's been a very, very valuable process. And we thank you for our WASC visiting committee who uh, came and joined us and uh, looked at how we examined ourselves and then uh, gave their nod of approval that we did honestly reflect upon who we are and what we're doing and, and identified our areas of strength and our areas that we need to focus on. So now, Lord, as we leave this place this day, help us use those strengths that we have identified to the utmost of our ability to continue to push forward in, in mighty and excellent ways in the ministry here. And let us use those areas of focus to be creative and to uh, find ways to improve them that we might even grow more so in helping students internalize the gospel message of salvation in Christ Jesus. Bless us, Lord, as we go about your work in this place. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>